This is DMG and welcome to the 70 system channel and in this video we're going to talk about what is a tabletop role-playing game? What on earth is it? Now you have absolutely no exposure to role-playing games, tabletop role-playing games, this is the video for you. If you have been exposed to role-playing games or you're an expert in role-playing games, this may actually help you to explain to people who don't know what an RPG actually is, and specifically a tabletop role-playing game. So there are essentially several different kinds of role-playing games. This one is where people will sit around and use dice and paper and pens, and they may even do it over the internet, so it's via a video chat, but essentially they're using paper and pens to create a story. Now, you're saying, well, what, what the hell does this mean? Well, essentially, it's a board game without a board. So, before in the argument section, you start typing away. Ta -da 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 -da. It's not a board game. It is not a board game, but it's like a board game. So I'm going to explain this even further. This is a classic board game, all right? So if you if you haven't played Monopoly, you probably haven't been around the last hundred years. So Monopoly is a game that has dice. It has little figures that are shaped of hats and dogs and things like that. It has a board where you travel around, um, and it has cards that tell you what kind of properties and things that you can buy. So how does this relate to role-playing games? Well, your role in Monopoly is to play a millionaire, a person who's going around buying up a property portfolio. And there are a certain fixed number of properties on this board, and you're just attempting to buy them all. And as you play, the rules allow you to gain more money. And if you land on someone else's property, you've got to give the money away, etc., etc. So you know there, there, there is a res It's a resource-based game. So what does this have to do with role-playing games? If you were to take the board away from Monopoly, how would you play the game? You'd still have like you know three, four, five people playing the game. But if you had no board, what, how, how, would you, how would you determine what happens in the game? Well, in role-playing games, you have someone called the dungeon master, the game master, and in 70s system, we refer to them as the director, that, the, that they actually direct the game. So the players are still playing a role. Okay, So in Monopoly, you're playing a millionaire and you're buying property. So in this circumstance, you take away the board, you have one person who now tells you what happens when you do things. So you're no longer you're moving along spaces and all that kind of stuff. You now have to tell the director what it is you want to do in order to further your goal of buying property in the game. So that's the first part. You There's no real board. So that takes me to the next section is that it's a collaborative storytelling game. So what that means is that because you're now having to communicate with the the director of the game you're now helping to tell a story about how you actually are um, your character that you're playing the role that you're playing is actually doing things in the game so how is he earning money how is he purchasing the property how is he doing a business deal with the other player how is he you know calculating the rent all these kind of things come into the, the, the story that is being told. So role-playing games do exactly the same thing, okay? You, you, you're, you're telling a collaborative story, um, you just don't have a predefined board that you're playing on. So there's not a huge removal in, in that respect. So it still also includes the element of chance. So in, in Monopoly, you're rolling dice, um, in order to determine how far you move. Well, in role-playing games, if you decide to do something, you roll dice to see if your character is able to actually perform that action. So your, <clears throat> your character has a set number of skills, 
like you would in Monopoly, you'd have a set number of properties or you'd have a set amount of money. Your character in a role-playing game has certain skills and has certain amount of resources in order to get the job done. So you then roll a dice to see if you are capable of getting that job done. And you'll see these little, and they call them polyhedral. So this is a D20. You get D10s, a 10-sided dice, a 12-sided dice, an 8-sided dice, a 6-sided dice, which is the normal one you find Monopoly, a D4, which is 4-sided dice, and then you can start to get crazy ones, 32-sided, 64-sided, 100-sided. It's, it, you know, ad infinitum. There's just more dice than there are role players eventually. Another aspect of role-playing is that it's a social game. The reason why people want to play board games, you like to get together with friends, you like to throw a few dice around, it's inconsequential, you know, you, you have some fun, you have a few beers, and you continue on. Same thing with role-playing games. It just happens to take a little bit longer. And not because the game draws out, it's because people get engrossed in the game. So it's not a game you sit down and for half an hour and you play. You could if you wanted to, but you wouldn't really get much done. So typically a role-playing game is going to be at least an hour and a half to two hours. And some of them will stretch on for many, many hours. You know, people do 10, 12 hour stints. Um, so that's not unheard of in a role-playing game. But it is a social game. The stigma of the socially awkward people playing in the basement is not actually true because it is a social game. You need to be able to communicate with people and you need to be able to actually have a good time. So that is an actually an important aspect of a role-playing game. Just as with any board game or card game or anything like that, it's vital to the success of a good game. Role-playing is also about problem solving. So there's in, in most board games, there's not really a huge amount of problem solving unless you play something like Settlers of Catan or whatever, where you've got to trade with people and you kind of have to figure out a strategy. Um, but tabletop role-playing is unique because the problems can vary from game to game. So it's not like you create a strategy and you just consistently beat people using that same strategy because there's no actual winner to the game. It's you, you're creating a collaborative story. So no one actually wins. The winning is by having fun or, or progressing in the story and, you know, building your character up in ability and scores and things like that. But there's no actual winner to the game. Now, the problem solving aspect of it is integral to the game because, you know, that's where all the um, elements of chance come into it. You know, if you're unable to perform a certain task, what do you do now? How do you resolve this problem if that skill is unavailable to you? So it's a game that really gets you thinking. It really uses the gray matter uh, between the, the bony substance here underneath your skin. It really gets the thought juices pumping. Now, in, in recent years, people have found that role-playing games actually help with uh, anxiety and depression. So people who suffer from mental illnesses like anxiety and depression, this actually can help them to alleviate that sort of problem. Um, it's not a cure, it's just something that helps to alleviate the problem. Um, you know, a lot more research and study needs to be done, but uh, personally I do know of people that have been uh, assisted greatly by playing role-playing games. It has assisted them with their mental illness. It is also known to help engage people who are on the autistic spectrum. So people who are con uh, who, who are considered to have a problem socializing, uh, which a lot of people with autism do because they don't, they don't really get to understand um, why people do the way they do, uh, why people do the things that they do. Um, this really helps them through playing a character to understand the mechanics of social situations. So it's, it's very useful as a tool for people who are on the autistic spectrum to help them figure out how to actually operate in society um, and not have the frustration of dealing with the ordinary people in the world. Of course, it is also fun. Role-playing games are a lot of fun. There are many, 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 many different types of games, obviously including 7D System. Uh, but, you know, the, the main one that everyone knows is Dungeons & Dragons. But there are others like Pathfinder and GURPS and 
Dungeon Crawl Classics and World of Warcraft role-playing game and Warhammer Fantasy and you know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, what some people like about this is, you know, you're not only just using dice, you can also be using cards, the element of chance. Um, you know, it, 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 it peaks almost that gambling sort of feel that people like. So, you know, that element of fun is also um, incorporated into the games that a, a lot of people are attracted to that sort of thing. Of course, when it comes to the stories, you're involved in adventures, there's excitement, things are happening, you get to be involved in stories of, 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 of stuff that you wouldn't normally do in your normal life. It's like going to a movie and being engrossed in a film, but you have complete control as to what's actually happening um, and the outcomes of what's actually happening in the story, which you don't get in a book or a comic or, or a movie or anything like that. So you really do have that sense of control and immersion in the story, regardless of what level of immersion you're actually playing. You don't have to be a full-on actor or do funny voices or anything like that. You can still be immersed in the game just from a storytelling standpoint. Now, over the years, I have built many friendships through role-playing games, um, obviously because it is a social game. So um, you, you can build lifelong friendships with people that you play with. And it also, you know, helps you when you, you're introduced to new players and that sort of thing on broadening your social circle as well. So people you may not have met before who have similar interests to you that the role-playing game helps to link those interests together so you'll you know things like um your creative abilities if you're an artist or a musician or even if you're a cook all these kinds of things people say a cook well how, how would a cook you know all these kind of creative abilities can be integrated into a role-playing game more so than you would with a standard game like monopoly so that is an introduction to what is a tabletop role-playing game and in the next video in the series, we're going to be talking about what is the best role-playing game to start with. So obviously my bias is towards 70 system, but we're going to take a more objective approach and talk about what game is probably going to better suit your style of thinking or your group of friends or that sort of thing and how you actually get into role-playing in general. So if you like this video, click the like button. If you want to see future videos subscribe to this channel and you can also support this channel on patreon at patreon.com forward slash 7d system there's the website 7d system.com and there's also a facebook page thank you for joining me and see you next time